Good afternoon. My name is Judith Gasper and I am a master's candidate in applied nutrition at University of New England. Today I'm here to share and discuss information on food with you. Uh, the reason why you're invited to this presentation is because we share something. We have something in common and that is that we all have a child with some kind of a food allergy. Therefore today's topic is Allergies should be no obstacle to healthy mind and body. Well, let's see what we know about food allergy. While it has been on the rise worldwide, especially in the Western societies, it affects about 15 million Americans, mainly children. The eight most common food allergens are milk, eggs, peanut, tree nut, soy, wheat, fish, and shellfish. Some allergies are lifelong, while others are outgrown in childhood. What causes allergies? We do not know. However, there are numerous uh, researches pointing towards directions such as uh, changing environment, air pollution, uh, giving birth with C-section, extreme hygiene during neonatal um, period, infant feeding practices, and maternal diet. Uh, there are also researches pointing towards other direction, which uh, is um, Western diet that is high in processed food with food additives, food colorings, and preservatives, and also showing some uh, relationship to low level of vitamin D. And now let's discuss why is food allergy a nutrition problem? Uh, there was a research done on snacks and uh, they concluded that eating tree nuts or almonds as snacks lead to more nutrient-rich diets among children and adults. Nut-based snacks are lower in empty calories and sodium. But unfortunately our children are actually excluded from benefiting from this food group. So why is food allergy a nutrition problem? Children with various food allergies tend to be deficient in macro and micronutrients. Weight and height are lower than the average. Milk allergy and multiple food allergies are potential risks for poor growth. So the goal of this presentation is to find and incorporate substitute food into the diet of children with food allergies to be able to offer a wider range of nutritious food and prepare food at home from fresh ingredients. So let's see what is the educational objectives today's presentation, uh, what we are trying to achieve today. You will be able to prepare a list of substitute foods to replace allergen foods. Record the amount of nutrients your child takes in daily. Appreciate the taste of substitute food. Set an example for the child how to prepare nutritious food. Overcome barriers to eating healthy alternative fruits and vegetables. Set budget to afford nutritious food and prepare it at home. Write shopping lists and do grocery shopping versus eating out. Use goal setting methods to achieve nutrition goals. Read labels in the grocery store and use nutrition information from trusted sources. Well, and now let's look at what we need to deal with when our child has food allergy. Uh, parents of allergic children need to continuously educate themselves or we need to educate ourselves, schedule follow-up checkups, strictly avoid food allergens, read labels in supermarkets, avoid cross-contamination, and constantly communicate with others who prepare food for our children. What to be aware of? Symptoms of food allergy can range from mild skin rash to severe anaphylaxis. I'm not sure whether you have seen your child and you know what anaphylaxis means, but that's when it feels that your child is choking and can't breathe anymore. It's very scary and we hope that we never have to experience that in our lives. Antihistamines are used to reduce symptoms, while epinephrine is the drug for anaphylaxis. Uh, that's the common name that we use, that we all have in our backpacks and we have to carry with us, and that's that EpiPen. Uh, there is no proactive treatment currently available for people with food allergy, so we just have to deal with it. Uh, what to be aware of? 
language, culture differences, and fear of embarrassment can be a main barrier of effective communication of food allergy and may result in taking higher risks. Uh, people with allergies have to plan ahead where to eat out. And at this point, what I'd like to do, I'd like to ask you to open that uh, folder that you have in front of you. There's lots of papers in it, and I hope they're organized. The first one should say a questionnaire, and we and you'll see a couple of questions. So I will read it out loud now. Then I'd like to ask you to take like 10-15 minutes to think about these questions and write answers. Some of them are yes and no answers. Some of them have space there where you can actually put down a couple of your thoughts as well. So let's see the questions are. Do you eat out or make your food at home? How do you choose a restaurant? You, do you check menus? Call the restaurant ahead of time? Ask about the ingredients and food preparation processes? Does your child with food allergy eat at school or you send food with your child? Do you have a plan for substituting ingredients? Have you ever thought about having substitute ingredients? Does your child eat enough fruits and vegetables? I think that's a common problem for not just for, uh, for children with um, allergies. Uh, do you take your child for checkups? Do you have any social problems due to your child's food allergies? Um, sometimes kids want to share food in school. And we have to be very careful and we have to educate our children that that should be very dangerous for them and they should not accept it. Or other children just ate something that still has residue on their hands and they touch each other and that can cause problems for highly sensitive individuals as well. So there's several different areas that uh, we need to really be aware of. So once you write your answers down, I'd like to have a little group discussion about it because I'm pretty sure that we will be able to learn a lot from each other. All right, so let's take some time. All right, so after discussing all these issues, I would like to continue this conversation and you have two more sheets in the folder. Look at the first one. It says, let's talk about and it says just words and there is blank and you can fill in the blanks for me or for yourself. Um, so let's talk about barriers. Um, what barriers do you face? Uh, you may have never even thought about that. Uh, you would need to replace some of the foods that you eliminate from child's diet because you did not think about nutrients or nutrition. Um, or you're just not comfortable making shopping lists or you don't know how to cook certain foods or you don't know how to cook, which is fine. We will expand on that as well. So remember, you share only what you are comfortable with. Fears. What fears do you have? Are you afraid of new foods because... Um, you don't want your child to have any, uh, any more, um, reaction to food. Or you're afraid, um, that your family will not like the taste of the new food. Or you are afraid that, oh, well, it may be a little bit too expensive for us. Discomfort. Are you uncomfortable discussing your, um, child's allergies with others? Or what is your ethnic background? Is this something that you talk or you do not talk in your culture at all? What is your lifestyle? What is your life stage? Life stage? Um, how is your job? Is your job actually keeping you away from shopping, cooking, spending more time on meal planning? Or you have a stage in your life that you go through changes, you just purchase the home and that takes up all your time. Uh, so all these uh, details will influence our daily activities. What is your family situation? Are you busy with traveling or are you taking care of some other family members as well, which takes up all your time? Uh, and then on the other side, you'll see, let's talk about if you believe that you can change the circumstances or you think this is it. Let's talk about if you just arrived in the USA, if you just did, what challenges do you face? The more you talk about it, the more there will be people there who can help you because a lot of us went through the same stages of change in our lives. 
And then let's talk about how comfortable are you with the English language.、Uh, in case of food allergy, it is crucial. To understand sometimes, or most sometimes, it is crucial to understand instructions word by word to avoid、um, any life-threatening situations. Therefore, <clears throat> English is important. So even during this、uh, presentation and filling in these sheets, if you have any English problems, I would be very happy to help you. I will walk around and spend a little bit of individual time with each of you. Um, I can relate it very well. When I arrived in America, I had the same challenges as well. So when you take a little bit of time on this, then I would like to learn a little more about you. So you got, you see, I'm very curious. <laughs>、um, any health promoting habits that you may have, please list it. So if you know that you're doing healthy things, like you go and exercise every weekend with your family, please write it down. Or if you know that you're eating certain types of food and that's healthy, please write it down. <clears throat> And any personal cultural beliefs about food that you have, what you know about food and nutrients, just generally a couple of things. What's the importance of it in your life? If your family supports healthy lifestyle, and family can be very different for each of us. Some of us family means only a father, mother, mother and children. In other some of the other cultures, it may be a much more extended family.、Uh, what language you speak at home? What type of foods you eat at home?、Uh, your favorite restaurants? Just write down one or two that you know you would go to. So if we decided to go out as a group now to eat something together, where would you go?、Uh, by the way, we are not going out because at the end of this、um, presentation we will have a cooking demonstration. So we'll prepare our own meal here in the kitchen. And also, what ethnic group health professionals you prefer? All right, I think you've got a lot of work to do, so let's get to this. And while we do that, I'd like to have all the children come with me, and let's take another table, let's sit around it, and I do have a Sudoku puzzle for you. I'm not sure if you've done Sudoku before. Usually, this would be something done with numbers, but this time, since this is a food presentation,、uh, we will have certain types of food instead of numbers. All right, so everybody will be busy for the next fifteen minutes. See you guys soon.